Welcome to week 6 live session of molecular spectroscopy of physical chemics past directive. I am Akko Provo. I am a PMR effect at Bombay Department of Chemistry. So I am a TA for this course and I discuss uh, numerical problems and uh, solve assignment weekly assignment problems for this particular NPTEL course. Uh, today our goal is to discuss the week five uh, um, lecture notes uh, those are taught by professor aninde datta uh, and uh, mostly based on the basics of lasers and before that also we'll discuss some the the uh, the aftermath of uh, the semi classical treatment of um, semi classical treatment of uh, one second, I'm just making check if everything is on. Yeah, so we'll study the aftermath of uh, the, the semi classical treatment of radiation with matter, and from there, we'll try to go to the basics of laser. And uh, we will uh, today we are going to look at the excited state dynamics a little bit, and then if time permits, then uh, obviously we are going to solve the week five assignments. And then if time permits, we will solve some numerical question from as usual from rotational spectroscopy, uh, specifically from Ban Oil book. Uh, okay, so then let's start today's session. And to start with, let me start with the lecture notes. So, so what are the things discussed? So First, we'll deal with aftermath of Here we have discussed the, the time time dependent perturbation theory for the mm -hmm. uh, we have used the fast order time dependent perturbation theory uh, on the uh, electric field and the dipole moments and we have come to know that uh, the uh, so suppose there are two states. stationary states with psi m which is the excited state two level states and the overall system is given by Obviously, when the uh, the perturbation is not there, the perturbation is very small, obviously, and will be there for very less time. And when the perturbation is not there, our molecule is in the, the ground state, which is high L, and Cl is one, and Cl perturbation is on for a very small period of time. Then our this mixing of states is going to take place, or the transition is going to take place. So from here, in the uh, previous week. Uh, professor has shown that this CM square, this CM square probability of transition or a part of this probability of transition which is, I will write it here, CM square, so this is nothing but CM star the complex conjugate of this and this is going to be some constant. constant multiply by the uh, uh, x uh, e0x uh, is the uh, electric field at time electric field uh, with at x direction
So this and there is the transition moment integral. So I am writing it like this, but this is actually nothing but mu L m is the dipole moment and the operator basically and psi m and psi l and this is actually we are writing it like this square of this and there is the term and there is a sine square term pi t by h em minus el minus h mu divided by em minus el minus mu square So we can actually, if you see, this actually going to give us, this term actually is going to give us the, actually whatever transition is going to take place, it will have, it will not be a monochromatic one, but will be a polychromatic one. Uh, why polychromatic? Because the transition spread, there will be a spread in the transition from, it will come from this uh, sine equation, sine square this. Uh, it will look like something like and then it will be something symmetric okay. and this is actually not zero if this is mu and this is intensity in this axis then it will, it will not be a monochromatic but a polychromatic one if there will be a natural line with natural line with okay and this point is actually mu zero we can denote it we can write this cm square in other terms or maybe we can um, let me write it like some constant e zero x square l m square then sine square see e m minus e l we can write it as e m minus L is equal to h mu zero. For the time being, we are not thinking that uh, em minus l is going for resonance condition. We are not really thinking of that, but we can write it like that, right? So if I can write it like that, then the upper part is going to give me pi t mu zero by mu and the denominator there will be i can take h out and mu zero minus mu square of this okay and we know that the energy density and the energy density is also you know energy density is given by rho nu that is actually nothing but some constant k and e0 x square actually is someone in the mind or is showing some okay we'll change the call let us come back okay so this is actually and this is the new zero okay 
now uh, let us convert it to something suppose this is actually if we think that how this cm square is going to behave if you see this is a sinusoidal curve but square of that so oh, how so there will be oscillation right because it is a sinusoidal curve but the square of it so it will only be on the positive side obviously the lowest value be in the zero but there will be some uh, oscillation so i will draw it so suppose this denote cm square so actually it is going to be so if this is zero then it is going to follow something like this due to my poor artistic skills the peaks looks different but for the time being i consider that and the maxima is actually going to be not one but this value right uh, i will just maybe i will show you here the maximum value is actually this right because sin square have a maximum value of 1 and it is multiplied by that okay now uh, you tell me that when this each the cm square for one period it is kind uh, it will come to zero and where it will come to zero it will come to zero at uh, some angle where uh, this pi t nu zero minus nu is going to be n pi right so actually this what is the time so if this is the time axis then it is going to be by nu zero minus nu right so this the first time it is going to be zero it is one by nu zero minus nu and then the second time it is going to be two by nu zero minus nu so actually this kind of oscillation of this uh, cm square or you can say the uh, uh, the a contribution of the sign to the uh, mixed state is actually known as a rabbi oscillation it is based on the name of the scientist rabbi oscillation okay all right from here we also see the maximum value if this is so i have written the energy density here so actually we can uh, i did not write it here right so i forgot actually so actually we can also write the cm square in term of some constant k in the capital k rho nu because see this e0 square and then some constant small k is there then this transition moment integral and then this nu zero minus nu square and obviously the sine square part nu zero minus nu this okay so the maximum is going to depend on these three things new rho new energy density the square of the transition moment integral and in the denominator it is new zero minus new square so the first point is the peak intensity will be maximum when when there will be a bohr resonance means the new zero is equals to new as well as the transition moment integral is highest or uh, is allowed and rho nu means the light is intense energy density is very high so at that point of time we are going to get a very high or uh, good cm square means a good transition right so and another thing when nu zero 
and new is going to be very the gap difference between new zero and new is very less means the near the bore resonance the frequency is going to be very small so actually what we are looking at really is this very small area why because this one by this frequency is going to be very high because if new zero minus new is going to be very less minus then the denominator is very less so the the time so this point will come very high in time so actually what we are looking at at the very early stage of this uh, peak okay so this is one part of the story that is being taught by uh, professor Dutta. then he was actually talking about uh, that at what condition we are going to get uh, we can generate laser or stimulated emission so so there could be two cases one is Suppose these are two of my state. Okay. One is excitation and another is de excitation. So the de excitation, so for excitation, it can use some uh, photon and also for stimulated emission, it can use some photon. Correct. So the moment, so laser or the stimulated emission will be there. When there is a net gain in the system, lasing is possible. Else, all will be absorbed. What is mean by net gain? The rate of stimulated absorbance absorption is going to be smaller than the rate of stimulated emission and that is from the Einstein's treatment we know that the rate of uh, stimulated absorption is dependent on this constant Einstein's constant of stimulated emission then energy density right and then the number of ground state molecule it will be lesser than B rho nu n m eventually this is going to give me these are equal so actually it is going to give me nm by nl is going to be sorry uh, nm by nl is going to be greater than 1 so nm will be more than nl right so in other terms i can write my nm by n is going to be greater than half what is n? n is total number of molecules nl plus nm as my nm is going to be greater than nl right so so if you consider so my nm is going to be more than n by 2 right i hope uh, please make this thing clear to you and this particular condition is known as population inversion and that is the ultimate criteria for lasing ultimate criteria okay so population your excited state should have more population than your ground state and then only lasing is possible okay
So this is we need to understand. So my Nm by Nl is going to be greater than 1 and in other words we can say my Nm by total number of molecules is going to be greater than half. Okay. Okay. Let us go to next page. So again I will draw this. My higher energy wave function lower energy wave function right this is absorption this is emission and there is also something so this is stimulated uh, absorption this is stimulated emission and this is my uh, spontaneous emission right so what is the fate of if there are the nm number of molecules nl number of molecules so what is the fate or rate kinetics of uh, nm so which is dn mathematically dnm by dt there is first there is formation so it will be plus right the rate i will write again b rho nu nl right and then there is decay due to stimulated emission b rho nu nm and there is spontaneous emission now see the spontaneous emission don't have these rho nu or energy density terms because it doesn't require that it is spontaneous it doesn't require any stimulation from your light so and also we can write this nl as as we already the total number of molecule is nl plus nm so we can write nl as n minus nm we'll write that And now what we are going to do, we will take all these terms of which have Nm to one side and we will take Nm common. Here actually we are discussing that if, I will write it in big other letters, if Leasing is possible in two level. And what you already know that for lasing we need a population inversion. That's all we want to see if that is criteria is matching here. So this is a two level system and now I will I told you that I am going to take all the terms of Nm to one side. B rho nu then actually 2 B rho nu here also and then A N M this looks little bad I will write it here okay can we write dnm as so i will once i will do one step 
dnf divided by b rho nu n i will take this thing 2b rho nu minus a nm i will dt to this side now can i write dnm as d b rho nu n minus 2 b rho nu minus a nm so in other words i am starting from here suppose starting from here what i will get i am going to get I'm actually going to get first I'm going to get zero and then I'm going to get this is constant total number of so this is constant NM can vary also NL can vary but the total number is going to be constant so 2b rho nu minus a this is this will come out and it will be dnm so to get this i have to take this thing into the denominator of this so eventually what i've got one divided by minus 2b rho nu minus a then here i got d b rho nu n minus 2 b rho nu minus a n m divided by again i will take this b rho nu n minus to b rho nu minus a nm is dt now suppose I'm, i want to do an integration of this okay now tell me if i am going to take an integration from 0 to t time then what is going to be the upper and lower limit for this so at time 0 what is the value of nm so if i write it like this if i write it like this how should i write it that at time 0 nm is 0 at time t nm is nm means so it is actually i'm sorry zero to actually nm right so when we do the so I will take eventually I will take this thing here but we are going to get a logarithmic function a length I will not jump steps a length b rho nu n minus 2 b rho nu minus a n m upper limit in 
Okay. So actually, uh, please ignore the voice if you are hearing anything. It's coming from I am from I am to the teaching from hostel and actually boys are playing outside. So let us ignore that. And this is going to be DT obviously, but not sorry, this is not going to be DT but T. But also, we have these terms right A minus 2 B rho nu, right? T. Now, what we are going to have it here, ln then the numerator is going to be the same right b rho nu n minus 2 b rho nu minus a nm and nm value is 0 here so we are going to get only this part b rho nu A minus two B zero new T. So in other word, I'm going to get. So I have this. So I will take exponential antilog of this. So eventually I am going to get. Suppose I am writing it here. Okay. So I am going to get B rho nu n minus 2B rho nu minus A nm. by b rho nu n is equal to e to the power minus right now it is plus so I can um, anyway I can take plus a minus 2b rho nu t what else and this is going to give me 1 minus 2b rho nu minus a nm by b rho nu n and if I take this 1 minus to that side I am actually having 1 minus e to the power actually let me write it in terms of minus of this okay to b rho nu minus a t and okay to this and then what is going to be my nm by n b rho nu n divided by 2b rho nu minus a then 1 minus e to the power minus 2b rho nu minus a t 
Okay. I should write this on the next page also. So what we have got is mm by n equals to b rho nu divided by I made one mistake. See, here it should be plus. It doesn't change anything to be honest. Actually, it changed one thing. So, this should also be plus. Then what else uh, mistakes I have done? B rho new n, B rho new plus, and this should also be plus, but a minus sign outside. Then this should be plus, right? Should be plus, this should be plus, and this should be plus maybe and I should not take n here okay so I'm writing the equation also in the final form a plus b rho One minus exponential minus two b rho nu plus a t. Now see what is going to be my n m by n at time zero. What is it? T equals to 0, e to the power 0, 1, 1, so everything will be 0 at 0. And then it will increase like exponentially and then not exponentially but like this. I can say exponentially but then it will hit a saturated point at t equals to infinity and t equals to infinity what is going to be? e to the power minus infinity that means it is going to be 0 so 1 and what else so it is actually going to be the value is going to be at t equals to infinity the upper limit is going to be b rho nu by a plus b rho nu c it should be 2 by this I have done another mistake here let's see here should be 2 If A is 0, 
कि मीन्स कॉन्स्टेंट रेट कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर स्पॉन्टेनियस जीरो देन ओनली वी आर गोइंग टू गेट एन एम बाई एन टू बी हाफ राइट बट वी नो फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस डेज ट्रीटमेंट दैट ए इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू बी if there is if for non zero b a is going to be there so for a two level system so n m by n is always going to be less than half which means no population in var sen lead to no lazing so lazing is not Going to be possible for a two-level system. Okay, but even at the same time, so. For a two-level system, we can see the lazing is a problem. But what about about a three or four-level system? Let's see. We'll draw the system and we'll try to discuss it. Okay. So suppose the first type of three-level system. So this is two, three, one. All electronic states. so the population is at beginning it is on the uh, ground state after photo excitation suppose it goes to 2 and there is non radiative pathway to 3 suppose there are six molecules and after one excitation two going to this and this transition is forbidden a well known system is like this is s1 singlet 1 first excited singlet this is ground state and this is triplet state t1 and this known as ic so in this kind of system the ic is a non radiative process which quickly populates the uh, triplet state but from triplet state t1 to s0 is a forbidden process so the is known as phosphorescence the radiated transition and it lifetime is very high even it can even go to our scale now after so suppose it is not coming back right and also let us assume that there is no non radiative processes associated from t1 to s0 now which each pulsing suppose 
there are now there are total of six molecules there but now suppose with time four molecules are here and three are here now there is a population inverse right so they are going to be lazing and the lazing is going to be what kind of lazing is this this will be then there will be lazing when the population inversion is done so this is going to be a pulsed laser right and if i draw intensity with time so it's going to be this once then it will again go gone all the thing gone to the ground state then it is again uh, it will take time for the population inversion then again the lasing will happen then again some time will go then again population inversion is taking place then again So it is not continuous, but it is pulsed. Okay, so it is like this. So another three level system. Suppose again all the same things two, three, one. Suppose there are six molecules to start with. Okay. Suppose now there is a heavy uh, this three to one is now oh, allowed, but also non-negative pathway is also there. Suppose so quickly it comes down. But two to three is now forbidden transition, so it will take time, right? Suppose there are six molecules here, and after excitation from one to two, so there is going to be suppose two molecules are there now. If you are going to compare the population of the two and second and third, there is a population inversion, right? So, what we are going to see is that there is a population inversion between 2 and 3. So, we are going to get a lazing. which is going to be continuous laser also known as CW laser how it will look like Yeah. 
What about uh, so these are two examples of three level system? What about a four level system? I'll give you an example. Suppose the no, so this is one, two. So there is non reality pathway between 2 to 3, k non reality from 2 to 3, and this is also possible non reality between k 4 to 1. And suppose then it will come from 1 to 2, then suppose there are 6 molecules and Earlier it was six. Now two are now here total six. Now a four are here two is there. Now there is a population inversion between three and four. So write it here that population inversion in this case population inversion is taken place after some time. In this case, population inversion is taken place instant and here. See here also population inversion is taken place instantly. So we observe a continuous CW lesion for a this kind of four level system a popular example is neodymium yttrium garnet india lesion from india Generally, the fundamental is there in 1064 nanometer, and generally, we use the group proton harmonic of that 532 nanometer. Okay. Now we will discuss something about this uh, how much time we left the next minute we have one hour so we are going to discuss something that what is the application what could be the application of these lasers application next was taught application of lasers so first we need to know that what are the properties of lasers first uh, high intense intensity then highly monochromatic Third is um, 
coherent coherent means the phase is same and fourth and most important is pulsed okay is the pulsed measures are being useful for to know the fate of the excited state or to there are could be many many applications you can uh, so that part i'm not going into in discuss because professor Dutta has already discussed that but what i'm interested to tell you about pump probe spectroscopy what sir has taught so firstly why pump probe spectroscopy is required or femtosecond uh, pump, pump probe spectroscopy is required to uh, probing chemical reaction at femtosecond scale bond so sir has also discussed that bond breaking can take place in the scale of 100 femtosecond so to do that one of the important to prove that one of the important uh, spectroscopic tool is pump probe spectroscopy in that what we do so there is a sample we excite it with a pump laser which is highly intense so what happens suppose this is the ground state one two three okay suppose it from excited from ground state to it goes to excited state with pump Okay. And then we probe the excited state. Suppose this excited state, different phenomena. There could be, there could be, so this is known as ground state bleach. Now, if my excited state, suppose there are earlier, there are six molecules now four molecule two molecules are in excited state it can absorb a probe of so i i will also excite the sample with weak probe light and the name is probe that's why we are probing only this light probe pulse and so pump pulse so this is intense this is weak so it can absorb some probe pulse and it can go higher so this is known as excited state absorbent this is known as ground state bleach and the other thing can happen some probe light in this wavelength region or this frequency region can cause stimulated emission so then it will be known as stimulated emission so these are the factors that can be proved using uh, transient spectroscopy and a very famous name is 
uh, said uh, Professor uh, Professor Ahmed Jue. He was an prominent uh, spectral photos from Egypt. He got Nobel Prize for his discovery of um, the reactions in femtosecond scale by uh, lasers. And Already, I Sarah has told that how this is going to take place. So I will directly go to show you how the spectra will look like and why so. Okay. So this is actually uh, the I am going to show you the schematics. So this is excited state dynamics with pump probe spectroscopy. Uh, it is named as uh, the it is uh, the we, we are collecting the delta wood the optical difference optic difference between the optical density which is difference between the difference in absorption so like that So I'm not going to discuss the particular experiment by Pro Professor Ahmed Jiyo, uh, the, uh, the bond dissociation of ICN or the oscillation of uh, sodium iodide to uh, ionic to uh, covalent sodium uh, iodide. So those are the things beautifully discussed by Professor Datta. I'm just going to give you the idea of this palm pro spectroscopy how the spectra looks like and why so so this is what we are going to measure difference in the absorption so difference in absorption between what once the pump is there and minus no pump so see these are all transmitted like we already know absorbency logarithmic pump i0 the incident light by uh, the transmitted light right so when pump is on minus so there are two situations when once pump on and pump is not on a probe is always there okay now what is happening uh, so these pump so these transmit uh, transmitted transmittance in uh, intensity of the uh, probe light all are probe there is no pump we are only detecting uh, probe we are not detecting pump pump is there to excite the sample and probe is generally a white light i will write it here probe is generally for uh, visible detection it is white light so white light contains all the wavelengths uh, from suppose uh, 400 to 800 right so we can monitor the dynamics at different wavelengths suppose we want to see only the uh, ground state bleach or only the excited state absorbance or only the uh, that that is why we are using a liar wide light so now so these whatever uh, detector has been done of the probe line so I0 by I pump minus logarithmic of I0 minus I no pump, which eventually leads to logarithmic of I no pump by I pump. Okay, I hope this part is clear. Now let me show you how one uh, transient absorption spectra looks like. This is what uh, typical uh, uh, transient absorption spectra would have looked like, where your negative, there are two negative signals. And one positive signals, but remember, more often than not, the signals are not uh, so different. It could be pretty much overlapped, and we don't know the uh, we can't estimate the 
uh, level of overlapping. So, which is very hard. But for the time being, suppose there are two peaks, two negative peaks. So, GSB will be negative and stimulated emission will show you a negative peak and your excited state absorbance is going to show you uh, positive peak. Okay. Now, let us understand why my ground state peak, my excited state absorbance and AC are going to be like this negative or positive. Okay. So, we have already established that my delta OD is going to be uh, delta OD is going to be logarithmic of I go path by I plus. So, first excited state absorbance, let us discuss this. So, we will discuss on the left hand side without pump and the right hand side with pump. So, see when there is no pump, all the molecules are there in the ground state, right? So, my probe light is not, uh, my probe light is not uh, uh, interacting with the excited state. So, the transmitted probe light is not changed. It is same. Okay. But when the pump is on, then there is some, my some of my molecules are there in the excited state, fast excited state. And suppose we are probing, we are probing at the excited state absorbance region, this region. Suppose we are monitoring this wavelength region. Okay. Then what is happening that at that wavelength are going to be absorbed by the excited state molecule to go fire, uh, further excited state. So my transmitted light is going to be decreased. The intensity of transmitted light is going to decrease. So, what I am going to get here? So, my delta OD is going to be I no pump situation is higher and I pump is intensity of the transmitted light is lesser with pump. So, it is going to be logarithmic of some value which is greater than 1, right? So, we are going to get some positive value. So, my that's why my excited state absorbance is actually positive. Okay. Now, next. Suppose ground state bleach. So what is happening in the ground state bleach? So ground during ground state bleach, we are only monitoring. Suppose we are only monitoring I mean the probe. We are only probing this part. Okay, we are only probing the blue region. This region where I have here just marked. Okay, suppose this region. The probe light. The probe light is a white light, right? So it consists all this blue, red, green, this all all portion it varies. Now suppose when there is no pump, there is no oh, so what is happening? There is no pump, so my ground state is uh, all my molecules are there in the ground state. But now I am actually probing this part, right? So or uh, where my absorbance is supposed to be. So it will absorb a, a few, very few particles are going to molecule, molecules are going to absorb my probe light to go to the fast excited state, right? Because it is coming on that particular uh, frequency domain where my molecule absorbs. So it will absorb. So that's why the transmitted light is going to be less, right? My no in case of no pump. It is going to be less and when the pump is on then my number of ground state molecules are lesser than the no pump situation. So the less molecule so as there are less molecule in the ground state so my transmitted light intensity will be higher in this case. So my denom denominator is high and numerator is low. So, we are going to get negative value of delta OD. So, that is why my GSB is negative. Okay. Let me once check. I have take the time for section of time for the next topic. Straight because. Okay. Now, 
Now let us discuss the stimulated emission part. What about stimulated emission? So again, no pump. So there is no excited state. Uh, there are no molecule in the excited state. And uh, currently we are looking at particularly at this uh, the probe light wavelength. We are looking at this region. Okay. So, so we are not looking at any other uh, light right now we are looking at this where my uh, stimulated emission will interact with the probe light only that area so now when there is no pump so there is no molecule in the excited state so, so there is no chance of stimulated emission so all the so um, my transmittance light is same as the incident light let it be but when pump situation is on there then there are molecules in the excited state and see in case of stimulated emission this uh, probe light is going to stimulate it, stimulate the emission but it is going to give me back so suppose there are five so if you see there are five arrows then and there are three molecules in the excited state like that so it is going to give me a more more intense light means uh, whatever was there earlier so if there are five photons and there are three molecules are going to come down or stimulated emission then i am going to get eight photons like that okay so my actually the transmitted transmittance intensity is going to increase so in this case i no pump again become intensity of no pump situation is again become lesser than the i pump intensity of the pump condition and it is again going to give me negative signal in all the cases, the situations are different, but GSB and AC are giving me negative signal and my excited state absorbance or ESA is going to give me positive signal. And we actually do tra transient absorption spectroscopy in more detailed way uh, to understand the dynamics. Here I have just given you the, uh, just the basics, uh, you can say, why the signals look like that uh, like uh, why GSB is negative or AC is negative and ESA is positive anyway so with that uh, let us go to the, the assignment section uh, we, for week 5 and let us solve that so the first question is in order to get a good spectra in order to get a good spectrum, what are the options? Speed of the acquisition should be fast. Actually not. If the speed of acquisition is fast, then my I, my spectra will be noisy. Uh, then what about the second point? Averaging time should be long. That is actually a correct answer. If my averaging is long, then my noise signal to noise ratio will be, my signal will be more like, it will be more average. So oh, it is good good spectrum what about the slit width also should be small right it is a correct option because if my slit width are small then effective slits with the should be small else my resolution will be bad anyway then the, what about the fourth option concentration should be extremely high no that is uh, not a good point okay now specifically for absorbance i don't know uh, you don't for a fluorescence you don't actually require uh, extremely high concentration very dilute concentration you require so anyway for second question time to break a bond is typically is time to break a bond break a bond typically is 100 to 200 femtoseconds right from iron equation and all we got that now third question two level system cannot be used to make lasers obviously because population inversion cannot be achieved right and that we have shown what about question number four for a two level system the ratio of the population of the higher and the lower state must be so population of higher nm by nl must be equal to or lesser than ratio of the population of the higher and the lower. 
greater than 0 0.5 should be, be not lesser it should be greater right for population inversion okay now what about question number five a and b are einstein coefficient for spontaneous and stimulated emission a nr is the non derivative decay rate constant lifetime of an excited state after the light is switched off is inverse of actually it is going to be the fourth option right because my tau or excited state lifetime is inverse of the rate constant which is KNR plus A as the light is on. If light is on then B should also be there. Anyway, so 6. A laser spectrum photometer is has higher resolution than ordinary spectrophotometer because the laser light is highly monochromatic, right? Okay. Now the last question of this assignment was in order to get femtosecond resolution in a palm probe experiments, the pitch of the screw on which the translational stage is mounted has to move in a resolution of, let us calculate that. So femtosecond resolution means 10 to the power minus 15 seconds, right? How much the light can travel? So speed of light is 10 to 10 to the power 8 meter second inverse, right? So at 10 to the power so for this 10 to the power 15 seconds, light can actually travel this much. But our system is so there are two mirrors like this. This is actually known as a retro reflector. So light falls on this, and then so this distance is actually very small, a very small distance light falls into this and it actually travels twice the distance okay so suppose 10 to the power 15 seconds so this it is actually 2s is this so my so this can be moved, this retro reflector can move, okay. This is mounted on a translational stage. So it actually has to move, suppose it has to move. When it move, so for 10 to the power minus 15 seconds. Wait, am I making it correct statement? Actually, when it moves is uh, let me remove this let me unthink that let me erase this So suppose I have to give a delay of 2t, okay, 2t means suppose the time is t, I am going to give a delay of t, then actually if I move my retro reflector in such a way, 
that um, am I making sense don't think so let me think how can I how can I uh, express myself in a better way Suppose I moved it to a newer position. This is the initial position, and then I moved it. Suppose this final position. Okay. So this distance is actually suppose if one side is s, then actually it has moved actually to s, right? So if I move, if I moved it by s distance, then it has to actually travel 2s distance. So 2s distance to suppose 2s distance. If I move it by s, then only we will get a femtosecond delay. Okay, let us I will write it here. Huh? So if we move the delay stage, not delay stage, but the, re the retro reflector by is distance we will get one femtosecond time delay okay so in one femtosecond how much light travels 10 to the power minus 15 into 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter, right? Second, second inverse gone. Actually, 3 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter. Right? So that is what, what I am trying to say by this equation. Okay? So this 2s path, how much time it will take by the light? 1 frame to second. I am actually creating a, means I am actually removing, I am actually moving it s. But the light has to travel 2s distance. Ignore this part. This is very, very small. This is very, very small. So, light actually has to travel 2s distance so so by scale don't judge it i'm not drawn it to the scale so this s is much bigger than this so light has to travel right okay so this this is 2s so S is actually 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter and I can say this is 15 micron right effective no this is 0 0.15 micron So I have to move my delay stage 
or the pitch of the screw should be in micrometers right so i will move it 0.15 micron to get a 1 femtosecond delay okay so the resolution to get a resolution in femtosecond scale i need to move the retroreflector or the pitch should be in the micrometer resolution okay so that was a good problem i think this discussion was very good so now we will as there are 30 minutes left we are going to solve a few uh, microwave rotational spectroscopy problem uh, let us start from here so the question says so these are the question from banuel book um, uh, a microwave spectrophotometer is capable of operating only between 60 and 90 centimeter inverse uh, was used to observe the rotational spectra of hydrogen iodide and deuterium iodide absorptions are measured as follows for two there are two columns we have to find out the rotational constant d the um, moment of inertia i and the bond length r for each molecule and we need to determine the j values between the transition which occur for the first line listed above for each and uh, we have to tell that uh, what does our results means the bond distance results support usual assumption of bond length is unchanged by the isotopic substitution okay i think we have only one page to do this let us make let us do this So we will start from here. First, anyway, uh, calculation of reduced mass. Let us do that. So for reduced mass of Hi, it is going to be I. I think was atomic number. Let me check once the mass. is 127 so 1 into 127 by 128 10 and deuterium iodide it is 2 into 127 by 29 ok what else we have we have the rotational spectrums so these gaps are so each rotational spectrum has the gap to be right so to be for H I we can see is from the first lines it is so can gap between twenty seven point one three zero and sixty four point two seven five is twelve point eight five five And same for these gaps. To be for deuterium iodide is 
and the extended rate is 21.577 minus 65.070 and let us see the next one also 71.5 6.507 this is this is the case so first we already know what is the rotational constant b for hj okay firstly these are in centimeter inverse right so b for hj is 12.855 divided by 2 which is 6.4275 centimeter inverse and B for the ethereum iodide is 6.503 actually 507 divided by 2 which is 3. Point so this is yeah. I need to erase this. This is done. Now we need to calculate the moment of inertia for each. So we know that rotational constant is actually in centimeter inverse unit, it is 28 pi square i c or in other terms i is 8 by 8 pi square b multiplied by c so what is i for so let us first calculate what 8 by 8 pi square c going to be 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 kg meter square second inverse 8 into 3.14 square 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter second inverse second inverse can be gone Okay, to see how to do how many 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by 8 into 10 to the power minus 34 square divided by 3 divided by 10 to the power 10 it is 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 46 kg meter square centimeter inverse so we just put this thing here i for hj is going to be 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 46 kg meter square centimeter inverse into 1 by b right and the b is 6.4275 centimeter inverse so as you remember centimeter inverse shortcut 
same time we see 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 46 kg meter square centimeter inverse divided by 3.25 It is 8.61 into 10 to the power minus 47 kg meter square. So, this is also we have got. What about the bond distance? Then we know that I is actually reduced mass into bond length square. So, R is actually going to be I by mu okay so r of in case of hi is going to be square root of 4.36 into 10 to the power minus 47 kg meter square divided by 127 divided by 128 a mu into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 27 kgs which is 1.36 into 10 to the power minus 47 divided by 127 into 128 divided by 1.66 minus 27 5 here actually going to get 1.63 into 10 to the power 10 minus 10 meter in other words 1.63 angstrom maybe we can write what about r of deuterium iodide square of Point six one into ten point forty seven kg meter square divided by two into one twenty seven divided by one twenty nine into one point six six into ten to the power minus twenty seven kg. Point six one into ten to the power minus forty seven divided by two divided by a kusakas multiplied by f twenty nine divided by one point six six into ten to the power minus satas. Divided by so to the power minus five, it is coming as one point six two. Actually, it came. Let me for more dramatic purpose. C 
x to 7 and it became 6 to 3 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter 6 to 3 angstrom so you can see that this is almost unchanged right there is no change so our result actually support the usual trend of Changed by isotopic substitution. Okay, I hope you got this problem. What we uh, we wanted to do, right? Okay, let us solve maybe another problem and then let us call it a day. Okay. So let us solve this question. So sketch a diagram similar to that of figure 2.7. Uh, let it be the thing using B is equal to 5 centimeter inverse and a temperature of 16,000 K. So rotational spectroscopy actually they are talking about the maximum uh, J. So J max we know the formula. KBT by 2HCB minus half. So this we got from the population and uh, Boltzmann constant. All we, did, uh, we took a differentiation of that and we obtained it here. So I'll just put the value KB means Boltzmann constant, right? One point three eight into ten to the power minus twenty three joule Kelvin inverse into solar sixteen hundred Kelvin divided by two into six point six two six into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second then C is 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter second inverse and what about B? B is 5 centimeter inverse is given so centimeter inverse centimeter gone second inverse second gone Jure gone, Kelvin versus Kelvin gone. So, what is going to be J max? And obviously, minus half. One point three eight into ten to the power minus twenty three. Into a solar flow divided by two divided by six point six two six divided by ten to the power minus thirty four divided by three divided by ten to the power ten divided by five and root of that gives us 10.5 
minus 0.5 actually it's 5.3 but yeah uh, actually this is 10 right so maximum population at 10 and this 2.7 this diagram is actually a diagram between in maximum not maximum but population of rotational rotational levels with j so here actually the J. Suppose this is 10, 10, we, we know this is maximum, right? So, and they also want us to calculate that what is the value of 2 or 3 points either this side or that side. So, we know what is Pj. Pj is actually going to depend on the degeneracy and the energy right exponential minus pj by kbt right what is ej to be a c b into j plus 1 actually but in joules we have to write it like that i will write one line here also So at P, let me first calculate what B A C by K B T. What is the value of this? But this is going to come in every direction. Five centimeter inverse, six point six two six, ten to the power minus thirty four joule second. 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter second inverse divided by kbt 1.38 into 10 to the power 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule kelvin inverse t is 1600 is given right 1600 kilo so this is going to give you joule joule cut is going to give you cut centimeter centimeter inverse cut kelvin kelvin inverse cut so this is actually the inverse so here we can i need to use 6.626 and to the power minus 34 divided by 1.38 1.38 divided by 10 to the power minus 23 divided by 1600 1.5 So P J equals to ten is actually two point 
2j plus 1 which is 21 exponential minus 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 13 into 11 j plus 1 right and you can see how much is this into a value 11 sorry and five give me a value of actually approximately 21. And then what about P, uh, P is equals to 9 and P is equals to 8. What about P is equals to 11, P is equals to 12, P is equals to 13 and P is equals to 6. Let us calculate just to draw the graph, graph right? So let us start from P6, right? For 6, it will be 2 into 6 plus 1, which is 13, into e to the power minus 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 13, right? Into Actually, I have written this value wrong.
Surely I'm not mistaken. Yep, I have made the mistake that getting to the first one, so it should be. See, this value is higher, highest at g equals to 10 and then it is falling down to the right side and let us check for the left hand side once more. So if this is 12.8 and 
Let's suppose this is nine, this is eight, seven, this is six, this is eleven, six is twelve, this is thirteen. So nine is twelve point seven. Eight is Seven is eleven point six five. Six is ten point eight. Then again eleven is twelve point seven. Then twelve point four, then eleven point nine. It actually follows like. Then this one is this. Okay. So this is how the population. with j will looks like okay so i hope this was a good exercise for you there are some numerical slip but we can do it on other days also but for now this is good and let us call it a day thank you for joining hope this session was useful to you